beat the crap out of each other. Mm-hmm. And that was that to me that's always what that rivalry, the physicality, mm-hmm. the talent, mm-hmm. the discipline mm-hmm. and just again, two story programs, you know, and those are usually who always com- competed in the recruiting world too. And you knew a lot of the guys that you competed with against Michigan that you played against, you know, mm-hmm. I didn't play a lot of games. I mean, because we didn't get a lot of Michigan. Uh, Oklahoma didn't send a lot of guys up to Michigan, but there was a lot of guys on the team, you know, that were from Chicago, that were from Detroit, that were from, you know, East mm-hmm. Lansing, that, you know, Michigan was just – you you that was that was the rivalry. That was – I mean, because, you know, nothing against Michigan State, but they were always considered Michigan's, you know, baby brother. That, you know, you just right. say, we'll right. get to you when we get to you. But Michigan, that was you know you, you circled that game on the calendar because you know it's going that, that was the game. You see all the and, you, and you'd have all the guys that played in that rivalry over the years come back and you know bragging rights were important. <laughs> you mm-hmm. know losing that game, you gonna hear about it all year. When you get when after season, come basketball season, you hearing about the Michigan football game. If they won or if we won, you, it's bragging rights. Yeah, because at that time, Notre Dame basketball, the Notre Dame football, basketball, Michigan football, basketball were at the top of the uh, sports world. So, you know, a lot of people don't realize that, that at one point Notre Dame had a very, very good basketball program as well as yeah. football program. And they started, oh, I mean, yeah. you got, we, we've had some success the last few years, and they're starting to get back on yeah. track. Uh, Coach Bray has done a heck of a job. Oh, yeah. I actually believe they got cheated last year, my man. But uh, we could have we used a cup. I thought we should have got in, but, uh, you know. Yeah, hey, yeah. I that, think they should have taken into health into consideration. I think they should have taken health into consideration. If you take that into consideration, yeah. Notre Dame gets in easily. Especially the way you got I, I agree. Seat, but I was one. Oh um, yeah, no. I outside of the traditional rivalries, what would be one of your favorite games? You know, I know. I mean, you got to know that you got the Michigan, you got the USC, you got the uh, Penn State. Is it a team? Is it a game or a team that you look forward to playing outside of that that group? Well, I'm gonna go with the game I did not like to play, and that was Navy. Okay. Oh, oh my gosh, that was literally the hardest game every year to get ready for because, you know, you're supposed to beat them, you're supposed to be better than them, but you're talking about a group of disciplined, hard, fighting, tough as nail guys that you're going to see, and they don't quit. They may be undersized, but they keep coming after you for four quarters. So you can never let down, because you know some some games you play, you know you you can see when you break a team. Mm-hmm. I never saw a Navy team break, even if they're getting we're pounding them, they just they would just keep coming, they would never quit. So that's the game I I, I did not look forward to because Coach Holtz made it a tough one during the week during practice. But you're talking about a game that you're going to have – you cannot let up. Never. You can never let up because they're going to keep bringing it play in and play out, and they play with such discipline and commitment, always had – and still do have such respect for the Naval Academy and what they – and how they compete and how they play game in and game out. have always been impressed with that, with that program. Oh wow! I didn't. You know what? I did not expect that. I did not expect that. Uh, is it a team outside of the rivalry that you look forward to playing to? Look forward to playing against it. I didn't say it was. I look forward to playing against Purdue because uh, that was going to be one of those <laughs> games we'd get. It would not. It wasn't a game that we were going to be. It was going. It was going to be a challenge because. Purdue was out to me when we played them 
it was just soft. You just knew, hey, come third quarter, we'll have this in the bag and we can kind of get ready to, you know, you know, party time. So you look forward to that. Wow. You just look forward to that game because it was, I'd say it was, it was kind of, it was an easy game, and you, you can actually look forward to the next week or the party that night. Oh, oh, oh wow! Oh, uh, you may have so, a fight. No disrespect, no disrespect intended. Really, no disrespect intended. But you just knew, come the hey. third quarter, you know the backups are coming in, and you going on the, you know, you get ready. To, it, it, it wasn't physical, so. You weren't going to get banged up. You knew, hey, I'm getting there, get out. You're going to be, you're going to be feeling good. Body's going to be doing well. You're going to be well rested. So come that evening, you're ready to party. Oh, wow. <laughs> you're ready to party against the bitch. Hey, man, uh, I hope, well, I hope, well, I hope they're listening, but I hope they're not listening. Uh, <laughs> no disrespect, though. Uh, another game, one of your biggest, your biggest moments is the snowball. The uh the the Penn State game. I'm I'm quite yeah, sure that was I hate Penn State, State, State that party. night. Yeah, yeah. Talk this is like about before it. Penn State was a was a part of the. This is that that year, senior that that was the year the last year before Penn State went into the Big Ten, and oh my gosh, that was one of that game was one of the coldest games I've ever been a part of. I mean, it was cold. And when you're playing like a Big Ten team outside of Purdue, it's going to be a physical matchup. And this is before Penn State was in the Big Ten, but they were a Big Ten school. And the way they played, you know, the way they competed, it was going to be hard fought, and you're going to get punched, punched in the mouth. And then you tack on top of that, it's cold. Oh, my gosh, that, that game sucked. I mean, that was a cold game. It was a painful game, and the thing about it, we were like, we cannot go out last home game of the season. We got to find a way to win this. You know, we had because that was a tough. You know, yeah, Kerry Collins, quarterback. Mm-hmm. You know, they, I mean, they had some horses, and yeah. man, they they brought it. They brought it, and it was just like, man, just let's win this and. That that game, there was no partying after that game. We won, but went back to the dorm. Well, senior, I was living on campus. Went back to the apartment. I was out. That was, I mean, it was in the training room the next morning getting treatment because we were banged up. Okay. Man, that's tough. You know, and you know, as a fan, even as a former player, I, I know that feeling. You know, you wake up and even your toes hurt. I definitely, I can remember things <laughs> like that. And uh, you know, as a fan, you, we never we disengage. We go again, yeah, man. That was a great game. We don't think about the limping afterwards. The oh my god, afterwards, and and and, and again. Being a former football player, I should have known that. It's, it's funny that you said it, and it, and it never registered or resonated until this very moment. Um, so let's talk about one of the uh, highlights of your career. You finished fifth in the Heisman. Tell, tell me how that feels. Because you said it was cool. I mean, to be honest with you, I had no concept of that. I mean, I wasn't even thinking along those lines. Because going into the season – you know, the focus was on Rick, Rick Meyer, Jerome Bass. I mean, we had, you know, one of the best offensive lines in the country, you know, talent from top to bottom. For me, I just wanted to, you know, kind of play my role. And and, and be honest with you, that, at that point, the Heisman had become such a, you know, political political um, award. You know, I, you know, it was like Garrison Hurst and, and – um, mm-hmm. Marshall Falk, you know, kind of they were actually he was after, but um, Marshall oh. Falk was he came, he was a sophomore, you know. Uh, Garrison Hurst was at Georgia. I mean, killing it. Mm-hmm. I mean, the guy that won, nothing against him, but he was not all that at quarterback, you know. So, it, I, it was it was nice to have the notoriety, but that was I mean, 
you know, I never really looked looked at it as being a a a big deal because it was not a focus. I was just happy again we were have success as a team. And when those, you know, when you start hearing the highs and talk, it's cool. But it was like, you know, it was just so, such a political deal. I didn't think a whole lot of it at the time. I mean, you know, you think, you know, years later, you know, it it was significant, but you know, there's no concept of hey, you know, I sh- it was, you know, it should have been this or should have been that. And in all honesty, I thought Garrison. Uh, uh, to be honest with you, I thought Marshall Falk should have won it. I mean, he had a phenomenal I, uh, season. That that man was amazing. Yeah, 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 yeah. I I do believe I I'm 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 definitely in agreement with you. I don't. Still, we're not gonna say anything bad about anybody because that's really not the point. But I, I'm, I'm trying to be as correct as possible. Yeah, I just let's just leave it there. I agree with you. I agree with you. I agree with you. Now, uh, your draft class is one of the better draft classes in, 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 during that period. And I call it the golden age of football, you know. Well, golden age of college football because it was a lot of teams doing great things throughout the country. You know, like you said, San Diego State, we had never heard of San Diego State, and now we got Marshall Falk. And then you got Garrett and Hurst uh, breathing life back into the University of Georgia. You and Jerome killing it. The whole country is on fire and you go in the second round to the Washington Redskins. Walk me through that process. Well, it was crazy. I didn't didn't even think I was in even on their radar. I mean, they had, you know, um, Ricky Irvin was there, and he was, you know, young back. Ernest Biner, I mean, mm-hmm. phenomenal. They said one of my mentors. Brian Mitchell, I mean, third down back, one of the best return men, arguably in the game of, of football in the NFL. So I was mm-hmm. like, I mean, you know, I'd gone in and gone through a, you know, a, a meeting with them and talked to them, but I'd never even thought I was even on their radar. I mean, they had a, a they had a stable already. They actually thought I was going to wind up with the Dallas Cowboys. Um, sure. said I had a, they had a you know Emmett was really it um, and they had just come off a Super Bowl victory um, I had mm-hmm. a workout they came in and brought the whole staff in did a workout with them and and did really well um, and they okay. were in contact actually I was back in Tulsa hometown during the draft they had someone up up at the house because, you know, I was said, hey, you know, you're going to be our top pick. And, you know, Jimmy Johnson was big for, you know, uh, trading out of trading picks. So they had the last pick in the draft, and they just said, hey, we're going to um, drop down, drop out of the first round, and we'll take you with – you'll still be our first pick. But, we you know, mm-hmm. drop down and get some extra picks. So I, And they had the 46th pick. So – okay. The Redskins literally picked me the pick right before the Cowboys were going to pick me. Oh wow! So I, I mean, because be honest with you, when the Redskins called, I actually thought it was the Cowboys calling and saying, "Hey, we're going to pick you with the next pick." So it was like, wow. "Whoa, who?" Had no clue that you know there was any that level of interest. Uh, from the Redskins, so it was, it was a little, it was a little, a little awkward. Wow, that's that's crazy. And uh, how was it being playing for the Redskins? Now you're in D.C., you're in the nation's capital. They have a, a story history as well. At that time, they were they were equal to the Cowboys, you know, because the Cow they had just won a uh, Super Bowl what two years before. And yeah, uh, ninety one. No, we did. So it was, but Gibbs had just just retired before I got there. So, mm-hmm. um, it was it was great. I mean, I I I, I love Northern Virginia. I uh, love the Redskins organization. Um, great teammates. You know, uh, Daryl Green was. You know, I mean, I still. Love that man. He was just just awesome guy. Took me under his wing. Ernest Biner, 
guys, you have a bunch of veteran guys who are so ingratiated 